Right, hopefully it's working now. Sorry, I was having some mic issues. So, uh, Winfox here once again. Hi, chiming in. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome to the Synchro Era. It's a crazy sentence to be saying. And second of all, uh, we finally figured out how we want to do the legacy rules. So we're implementing it starting from the Synchro Era since we feel like it makes sense now. So a couple of things concerning the legacy rule, which basically just means like, okay, we are allowed to revisit old archetypes and play old cards, even though they aren't mentioned or included in the set. But uh, whenever this rule applies, so 50% of your main deck has to be from the set in the episode. Like whether you are, uh, whether or not you're playing like a legacy archetype in its fullest thing, if there's something like, well, happy and back the curtain a, a little bit uh, this episode, we might see in charge of the light brigade plus Raiko. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's a thing, but regardless, whatever is the case, like your main deck has to include 50% of the current set. So, because we obviously want to be have the progression there and have to want to include like new cards and display those new cards. And obviously, you're only allowed to play a uh, legacy archetype whenever it actually gets support in the set. So, Jinx is not just going to be playing heroes for the rest of the uh, series because that would be silly. And obviously, you have to be playing uh, some cards that are of the archetype. So, it's not like, okay, uh, we are now playing Charles plus Raiko for the next 10 episodes, even though uh, neither of those cards then came. We can play them here now because Charge came in this set, but in the next set, if we want to pl play that Light Swarm package, we need, we need to have another Light Swarm card that we need to include uh, and uh, to be able to play Light Swarm. Uh, sorry, Charge and Raikou in uh, at least three copies. So we're not just having a single, basically, Garnet in our deck in order to be playing that thing. So just something to make things easier. And finally, uh, we are skipping, uh, this is a little bit, a little less related to this thing. So we're skipping the 5D starter for now. There are some very relevant cards in there, though, that we want to highlight in the future. But uh, we're doing a couple actual episodes of, like, uh, main sets of 5Ds. And then we're going to revisit the starter deck in the way of the 2009 uh, 5D starter deck. Because it's very similar, but just strictly more interesting. And probably pitting that against Zombie World. So we haven't forgotten about Zombie World. We've just been waiting for a set to you or another deck to be playing that. I think it'll be interesting to be playing an old structure deck against a new gen uh, starter deck. But yeah, uh, sorry for the lengthy intro, uh, that'll be all for now. So uh, I'll have the reminder in the future in descriptions, but felt like once again chiming in and actually talking about it a little bit since it's the first time we're doing this. But yeah, regardless, welcome to Synchro and hope you enjoy the episode. Yu-Gi-Oh! An incredibly complex card game with tens of thousands of cards. However, what if each set was separated from the rest of the massive card pool and your choices when building a deck were extremely limited? In this series, in order to learn Yu-Gi-Oh! from the ground up, I will be embarking on an adventure through the history of the card game with Jeex. In each episode, we will have access to all the cards in a select product, and using all of the cards in that product, both of us will build a deck before playing a best of three match to determine the winner of the episode. We will move in a chronological order in the series and with each new episode we will forget the cards of the past in order to experience something brand new. We hope you enjoyed this adventure through Yu-Gi-Oh! and its evolution with us. Welcome to the historic Yu-Gi-Oh! learning journey. What is up ladies and fellas and welcome to another episode of the historic Yu-Gi-Oh! learning journey and welcome to the Synchro era. So the white border cards are finally here and it's an exciting time to be getting into this and Synchros are a, a less common summoning archetype, at least for me personally. I've never really played with them, so it'll be very interesting to see what they have in store for us. Hopefully my mic, I was testing things out, hopefully my mic should be uh, working fine. I was having a couple days ago some mic issues, so hopefully everything should be fixed out, but yeah. Uh, Let's dive into the Duelist Genesis as well as we have Champion Pack 7 that we are going to be covering uh, this week. So let's take a look at what these uh, cards have. So right at the bat, uh, probably you know what Synchros are, but just in case you're somehow here and you don't know what Synchros are, Synchros are an extra deck archetype that you summon by using the required materials, which usually is... Uh, uh, 
and X amount, X amount of tuners and X amount of non-tuners. Sometimes they have to be specific, sometimes uh, non-specific, and you just have to use those materials to combine for an equal level. And these have to be on the field unless otherwise specified to synchro summon. And um, yeah, tuners are a new monster type that will cover that specifically is used to summon synchros. But yeah, I'll try to not talk about every card since uh, now we're entering an era where a lot of cards are actually not as common uh, or familiar to me, but I'll try to talk about uh, some cards that I feel like are the highlights as well as I will talk about all the synchros. So uh, let's get right to it. So right off the bat, we have a, a, our first synchro, Avenging Knight Parshath, a retrain of the original Parshath, a level eight synchro with 2600 attack, uh, made with a tuner and one or more non-tuner -light, non light monsters. And once per turn, you can change your opponent, one of your opponent's face monsters battle position. And then this card also inflicts a piercing battle damage. Turbo Booster is a special summonable card, which is what now when extra deck monsters become, become more and more relevant, a special summon is something that becomes very relevant for us. So if you have a normal summon a monster, this way you can special summon Turbo Booster from your hand. So basically just a free spell summon. You contribute it to destroy one monster your opponent control have battled one of your monsters this turn. Nitro Synchron, our first tuner. So uh, Nitro Synchron, when sent to a graveyard for the synchro summon of Nitro Synchron monster, it draws you a card. It re gives you, it replaces itself when used for a synchro summon, but even early on, I feel like stuff like this will be pretty specific and it'll be. Hard to see if it's good enough to be played. Uh, Synchrons are also an archetype. And also another thing that uh, we are now, I hopefully remember to include the uh, intro. <laughs> that would be awkward if I didn't. Uh, but yeah, uh, we are including the legacy rule starting from now on. So I'll, I'll, I'll have that at the start of the episode. So you then know what that means. So going forward, we'll have that. In effect, a uh, Quillbolt Hedgehog, extremely good card actually. I think this will be one of the uh, staples of this episode. A level two machine. Uh, I won't talk about the stats if they're not relevant. If it's in your graveyard, you can spell summon it, but banish it when that leaves the field. But you must control tuner to, to activate and resolve the effect. Uh, then uh, Shield Warrior doing the damage calculation. It's it's like a words worse uh, gardener in your. A grave, you can banish it from your grave, and once you, uh, you control cannot be destroyed by. Well, this paddle, it's a de decent body though, so that's pretty neat. So you can maybe use it to summon a synchro, and then it does something in the grave, but it doesn't stop the battle. It only prevents battle uh, destruction. Uh, a small archetype in golems, nothing really relevant. I also want, even though turn tuners are new, I don't, I won't be talking about stuff that I feel like is just so irrelevant. So, but something that might be relevant is Dark Crescent, which is a level three fiend tuner, uh, decent body actually. Uh, and the first time it will be destroyed by battle each turn, it's not destroyed. So I feel like for tuners, a lot of time, especially like early on what we're going to be looking forward, obviously special summon is the best way to go about it. But another, uh, the second best thing for a tuner is something else just helps it stick on the field. Because if you can just turn one, uh, set a resonator, your opponent just summons something on their first turn, swings into it. It's not destroyed since that's the first time it would be destroyed by battle that turn. Oh yeah, important, by battle, not by card effects. Uh, and then you get to back to your turn, you can then normal summon something and then synchro dark resonate with that. That would be very pretty powerful actually, I feel. Uh, Mind Master, a band card, uh, a level one psychic tuner, where you can play pay 800 life points and tribute the psychic type monster, except Mind Master spell summon a level four lower psychic type monster from your deck in face up attack position. None once per turn, summon stuff from the deck, pretty self-explanatory when it's banned. It's very good and very flexible actually, we have a lot of uh, Good psychics in this set as well. Uh, Crabons level two tuner. When it's targeted for an attack, you can pay 800 to negate the attack. So Crabons another tuner that actually has a way of letting it stay on the field. Also a level two, so it gives you more different levels. Uh, Mind Protector is a level three, 2200 defense body, so pretty decent because of that. Uh, maintenance cost of 500 life points during each of your standby phases, and it prevents monster with 2000 or less attack for from declaring attack, except Psychic types. A Psychic Commander is a level three tuner, Psychic tuner. And when a Psychic type monster you control balance, you're doing the damage, take you and pay life points in multiples of 100 up to a, up to 500. 
to have the monsters battle lose as much attack and defense. So you can basically just make your opponent's monster lose 500 by paying 500. Psychic Snail, uh, 1900 attack, which is decent, a level 4 Psychic, where you can pay 800 life points and select an one other phase of Psychic the monster you control. And that monster can attack twice, but uh, Psychic Nail cannot attack the turn you activate it. Then we have just more Psychic stuff that's not really relevant. We have Gladiator Beast, a quest. So Gladiator Beast are up on the table. Uh, a quest adds stuff from your graveyard back to your hand. Uh, I think uh, I would. I kind of would like to play Gladbeast, but also I think I'd rather just highlight like Synchros personally at least for this episode. So at least me personally, I'll probably try uh, to avoid playing an archetype if we have like very recently highlighted that. And there is one exception for that, which is my favorite archetype in the entire game, though. But uh, that'll have to wait for the Exes era. Eh, you'll don't see. What that is about. Uh, Jenny's Lightsworn Render as well here, so Lightsworn up on the table as well. Uh, Twin Barrel Dragon, gimmicky, uh, coin flipping, maybe can pop something. Then we just have a bunch of uh, kinda whatever cards. Uh, multiple Beast Golem is the uh, fusion for all the golems. And then we get to the uh, rest of the synchros in the set. So the, uh, we already went over Parshat, but the rest of the synchros are Nitro Warrior, which is the only level 7 synchro in the uh, set. Uh, 2800 attack, which is pretty huge. Uh, specifically needs the Nitro Synchron that we talked about earlier, though. And during each of your turns, if you activate a spell card, uh, Nitro Warrior gets boosted by a thousand attack during the next attack. Uh, and during damage calculation only. And uh, if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle when attacking after damage calculation, uh, you can swap one of your opponent's defense position monsters to attack, and then you can attack that as well. But uh, the attack uh, boost doesn't apply to that attack. Then the namesake of the uh, set, one of the most iconic uh, synchros of all time, Stars Dragon. A level 8, a completely generic uh, synchro. What we call generic synchros is just ones that require a tuner and non tuners, uh, and, it, and they just have no other requirements. Uh, 2500 attack, and when a card effect is activated that would destroy a card or a card in the field, you can ask a quick effect tribute, Stardust Dragon, and then negate the activation and destroy it. And then during the end phase, Stardust comes back from the grave. Important to note that uh, similarly to. Uh, to basically any special summoning mechanic. Uh, all uh, extra deck monsters have to be properly summoned to be able to be special summoned from the graveyard. So if you somehow cheat Stardust on the field, uh, you can activate the effect, but when you activate the uh, effect to tribute it, it then doesn't come back from the graveyard during the end phase. But in this set, it doesn't matter. Next, another generic uh, one, we have Red Dragon Archfiend. Uh, the biggest thing in this set, I do that 3000 attack, sorry, also generic. And after damage calculation, if this card attack an opponent's defense version monster, you pop all of the defense version monsters your opponent controls. And once per turn during the end phase, you have to destroy all of your monsters that did not declare an attack this turn. And Archfiend has to be on the field to resolve the effect. And I'll cover Archfiend next, since it's the third uh, completely generic level eight we have here, where uh, it's 2700 attack, and if it destroys a monster by balance in the graveyard, you gain a life points equal to the monster's original attack in the graveyard, so it reverse wingman effect. And then when a spell or a trap is activated, it targets a specifically one psychic monster on the field. Uh, you can as a quick effect uh, pay 1000 to negate the activation and pop the card. And the reason why these are all pretty interesting is because they sort of create this interesting dichotomy and... Uh, Rock, paper, scissors almost, like with level 8s, where Red Dragon Archfiend is just a thing that you summon if you just want the biggest thing. Stardust is small, so it can get beat over by things, but it, it can be like very good at actually protecting your stuff, because uh, we'll see in a little bit we have stuff to actually target pop things, so Stardust is obviously good for that. And Archfiend is just a good middle ground where it gains you something when battling, and uh, you can also use it as disruption, but it gets destroyed by Archfiend. So, like, I think... I overall, I just think uh, this is such a cool uh, lineup of synchros to have for the first synchro episode. And I have to give Konami props that even back then I think they released a good package for the first one. Uh, then we have a single uh, level 6, which is Goyo Guardian, very notorious. Not generic, needs an Earth Tuner. 
2800 attack, so very massive, and a simple effect where when it destroys some monster by battle and sends a graveyard, you can spell summon it to your field in defense position. Final Synchro, Magical Android, a level 5, 2400 attack. It also generic Ender Age of your end phase, you gain 600 life points for each Psychic type monster you currently control. So, at the very least, from Magical Android. It's just something that's super easy to bring out since it it's only a level 5, you can use a level 2, level 3, you can use a level 1, level 4. These are normal summonable stuff to get a pretty decent bit stick on the field. So, that's a lineup of Synchro Monsters. Uh, then for the rest, uh, Fighting Spirit, a simple battle boosting that also protects it once from being destroyed. Desynchro targets Synchro Monster on the field, returns it to the extra deck, and then all the monsters that were used for it, uh, if all of them are in the grave, you can spell some of them. Not a quick spell though, in very important. Lightweight tuning uh, makes any of our light monsters, level 4 light monsters, a tuner. Uh, Psy Station, when a psychic type monster normal summon, you can pay 500 to increase its level and attack. And this is mostly important for manipulating for levels for synchro summoning, obviously. Uh, Psy Impulse tributes a psychic type monster to return all of your opponent's cards in their hand to the attack and then make him draw 3. Um, Maybe devastating at turn 1, but otherwise a gimmick. Emerging to teleport, probably the single best card in the set. I'm not kidding. So, a quick play spell where you spell summon a level 3 or level psychic monster from your hand or deck, but banish it during the end phase of the turn. This basically gives you uh, immediate access to extra copies of all of the good tuners that you would mostly want to be lying, apart from maybe like Resonator in the set. And also, obviously, it's a spell summon, so it doesn't take your normal summon either. I feel like emerging to teleport is probably the best. Uh, card in the set, and there's a reason why uh, Teladad dominated for such a long time. Gears had also uh, debuts here, so the field spell for Ancient Gear, where you both players can normal summon Ancient Gear monster for one less tribute, and when Gear Down gets popped and into the graveyard, you can spell summon an Ancient Gear monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So, very good support card for Ancient Gear. I still don't think Ancient Gear is good enough to be played, but... It's still obviously a very core and very good card for the uh, archetype. And I feel like Ancient Gear is something that I want to be visiting in the future when we get a little bit uh, a little bit better support. But it's still like definitely a card worth noting. Uh, Book of Eclipse, a quick play where you change all phase monsters on the field to face down defense position, and then during the end phase you change uh, as many face down defense position monsters your opponent controls as possible to face up defense position. And your opponent gets to draws. Uh, has been recently pretty good in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I think it was because of Kashtira. Was it Kashtira? Or was it for Ninja? I know I've heard of uh, uh, Book of Eclipse, like, re uh, talks of it uh, pretty recently, but, like, for the sake of our episode, I don't think it'll be too great. Uh, Graceful Revival is a Call of the Haunted for level 1 or level 2 monsters. Defense Raw, during your opponent's uh, turn at damage calculation, you don't take battle damage and draw you in then draw a card. Uh, doesn't protect your monster if your monster is being attacked, but it still replaces itself and negates some battle damage, which is pretty interesting and important. And there's a lot, like it's important to know that there are a lot of actual cards that have uh, cost for life points. So that's why it's pretty important. Uh, Psychic Overload is uh, Basically, just a avarice for psychic types. You target three psychic monsters and you get a shuffle out in the deck and draw two. It's a trap, though, so not as great. A telepathic power uh, when a psychic type monster you control is destroyed by battle with an opponent's attack monster, you target the monster, destroy it, and again, life points equal to the destroyed monster's attack on the field. Uh, important to note that you also have uh, a magical android and uh, um, archfiend are both. Uh, psychic types, but obviously if you fire this at Archfiend, it can just use its own effect to negate it. Assuming your opponent has at least a thousand life points. Uh, Mind Over Matter, also a very good card since we have so many, uh, I feel like, good psychic type monsters in the set where a, when a monster would be normal special or a spell trap is activated, so basically just almost an Omni Negate. You tribute a psychic type monster and negate summon or activation and pop the card. Uh, War Chariot, uh, Effect monster negation for Glad Beast, but like I said, I don't know if we're going to be seeing uh, Glad Beast here. 
Herald of Orange Light also debuts here where you can send this card on one of the favorite monsters from Hunter Graveyard to negate the activation of a monster effect and destroy it. I, I don't think we have enough like fairies to here be playing counter fairies, but the archetype is there. And uh, uh, let me see if there's anything else I want. Okay, uh, Kunawa Chain is interesting since it's attack boosting and also stops an opponent's attack essentially, but I wanted to leave these for the last. So the last two cards that I'll talk about are the Tricky and Charter Light Brigade. And I feel like I wanted to save these for the last one since I think they're very important in the set. So the Tricky first is a level five that can be special summoned by discarding a card. So for the sake of synchro summoning, getting access to a level five with a special summon, so like a pretty good body with a special summon is so important. So Tricky, really good because of Synchro Summoning as a mechanic. And Charge of Light Brigade, simple. Uh, a spell that sends the top three of your deck to the graveyard to add a level four or lower light zone monster from a deck to your hand. And this is also why we wanted to include the um, Legacy Archetype rule here. Because for the longest time, decks just ran Charge and Raikou. So this is just here to essentially thin out your deck and get Raikou out of your deck to then have access to Monster and Popping. So I feel like this, the, like this all was why we wanted to, it also made sense to start at the start of Synchro Era we thought, but also like this, uh, we felt like it facilitated that even further because Raikou and Charge is just a neat a combo, I feel. But yeah, that, that is all in the main set. Sorry, it's it's a, it's a very long uh, lengthy intro, so I apologize for that. There's a lot to talk about, even with skipping a lot of cards. But let's just really briefly now look at Champion Pack Game 7. So, Legendary Jujutsu Master returns, so when in defense position, if it battles a monster, the damage that the monster gets placed on top of the deck, obviously very devastating against extra deck monsters. Threatening Roar, just very good, your opponent cannot declare an attack this turn, protects you aboard. Uh, Beast Yari also returns here, but we have access to Glad Beasts anyway, since they're in the main set. Uh, Lone Fire Blossom also returns here, but we don't have Giga Plant or anything like that, so Cheeks can't do his shenanigans. And okay, Vanitas Fiend cannot be special summoned, neither player can special summon monsters. We wanted to highlight obvious the synchros here, so even though it's obvious in each, it's a normal summon, that it cannot be special summoned in any way, you have to normal summon it and it needs tribute, we still felt like we wanted to give synchros as much of a chance to shine in this first, very first like synchro episode. So Vanitas Fiend, we've ag agreed with GX to the gentleman out, we will not be seeing this card. Obviously, it would be very good at uh, stopping spell summons, so you can just establish your own synchro board, then summon Vanity's Fiend, and probably GG. We don't want to be seeing that, so that's why we handshaked out of playing it. Dragon Dealing also returns, so you each player draws and discards one. Uh, Fizzle Dragon is also interesting, since it's uh, you can normal summon and set this card without tributing, but this original attack and defense become helped. But because it is a level 7, that's, that is another card that gives you access to different synchros. Uh, it's not a special summon, obviously it makes it a little bit worse, but being able to normal summon a level 7, obviously for the sake of synchros, is pretty good. In the fusion, we don't have anything to summon it, but it's very good. Same thing like Ancient Rules, we don't really have anything that we would want to summon it for. Counter, counter, kind of whatever. But yeah, a really, <laughs> like I said, really sorry about the very lengthy sack breakdown. Uh, since it is the very first episode of the Synchro Era, and I wanted to explain the tuners and synchros a little bit, as well as to give some background. Uh, it was a little bit lengthier, but hopefully you enjoyed it regardless. So thank you for watching the set breakdown and I will see you all in the deck building section next. Okay, the duel is Genesis. It's time for Synchros, baby. It's finally time to actually use the fucking extra deck. We're gonna... I'm honestly very excited. I I'm so interested to see how we're gonna be able to utilize the extra deck in every single episode uh, in the future. Mostly because the fact that before it was kind of a meme for Weep Fox to always have 15 cards in his extra deck and never be able to use them. And now it's going to be, he's going to have 15 cards in his extra deck and I'm interested to see how he's going to use them. But to start off, uh, the Synchro era starts with the Duelist Genesis, but although I found out just moments prior to doing this recording that the actual Synchro era began with Dual Terminal. And Dual Terminal came out like a couple of we a week or two before the Duelist Genesis and it had 
cards like Bryonic, which is a pretty good card, by the way. It's one of one, one of the best turncoats they ever printed in the original iteration. It's it's been errored to hell and back, but still, this card is so fucking broken in its original version, it's not even funny. So it's kind of crazy to me to look at most of the synchros in the set and be like, mm, well, that's not very, very strong. Like Archfiend, Red Dragon Archfiend is pretty strong for the standards of the era. And same with Stardust. And well, I guess uh, Goyo and Thought Ruler. But then there's stuff like Nitro Warrior, Magical Android, and Parsha. I think there was no other synchros in the set, so it's kind of whatever. But for the most part, I would say that the synchros don't uh, Goyo Garden is probably the closest with Dark Strike Fighter to reaching the same level as Bryonac and every other like ice barrier synchro that we get in the fucking game, which is funny. But yeah, we're gonna talk about that when we get to Hidden Arsenal in uh 2028, you know. But to kick off uh the Duelist Genesis, we have Dark Resonator, which is a level three fiend tuner effect monster. Uh, now tuners are monsters that ha you have to use for synchro summoning. It's basically just they're, they're basically just a new monster type or subtype in addition to their actual monster type. So we have, we now have Tuners, Gemini, Toon, Fusion, Synchro, and Ritual. Those are the only like additional types. And I guess normal, because normal is now printed on cards. But you know, that's that's not the same. And I guess effect monster too, but effect and normal are like weirdly interchangeable. Oh yeah, Union too. Yeah, Union. I forgot about Union. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, the way you use tuners is by having a card that is of a, spe a specific synchro, for example. Let's say you have level 5 synchro, and you have a level 3 tuner, then you would have to have a level 2 monster on the field, and you send both of those cards to the graveyard to special summon the level 5 synchro. And that's all I'm going to tell you. You're going to have to figure the rest out yourself, okay? Uh, so Dark Resonator is a 1.3k, not really a bait stick. It's got a solid body. Uh, it has the effect the first time this card will be destroyed by a battle each turn. It is not destroyed. This card is actually probably the best wall in this entire set to set face down on turn one. Like, there's zero chance your opponent is going to be able to run this over. So, uh, then we have a... Uh, Genesis. Now, Genesis is a Light Swarm card. We could use this. We can, we are actually using that as an excuse to invoke the Legacy rule. We're playing two copies of Genesis and three copies of Charged Light Brigade to play two copies of Raikou, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Genesis is a 2.1k wall, which is honestly going to become more and more common from here on out, where we just have cards that are have good stats. Like, good stats are super common now, for no fucking reason, really. Uh, Genesis has the effect of during the end phase if a card was sent from your deck to the graveyard by the effect of a Light Sworn card this turn inflict 500 damage to your opponent and if you do a uh, game 500 it doesn't matter we're not going to be using that yeah, King Kabio. Oh yeah, Spirits are also a card type. No, I forgot. I forgot about that. Uh, can I be special summon when this card is normal summon or flip to a sub? You can target one level one monster in your graveyard and special summon that target. But banish it when this card leaves the field. So we have one target. Uh, technically, we have two targets. Sorry. We have a uh, Mind Master and Turbo Booster for this. And that's only important because of the, important because of the fact that uh, we can use these for some card plays. So let's say we summon King Kabio and we have a Turbo Booster in the graveyard, but we have a Psychic Commander on the field. We can then and use King Kabio to summon Turbo Booster to go into a level 5 Synchro Monster. That's combos. I love that. That's my favorite. But yeah. Uh, then we have Krebons. Krebons is a level 2 Tuner Monster with 1,200 attack and the effect, and it's a Psychic Monster too. Psychic being a new monster type, not a subtype like Fusion, Spirit, Gemini, da, 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 but a monster type like Warrior, Spellcaster, and so on and so forth. That was introduced in the Duelist Genesis. It is... Very odd, very strange. It has a strange ass. Like it, it feels more like an archetype in terms of how its identity is, where it's gaining a lot of life and using life points to pay a lot for a lot of effects. So I don't even understand why it's a general like monster type and not just a archetype. But oh well. Uh, Krebans has the effect of uh, when this card is targeted for an attack, you can pay two eight hundred life points and negate the attack. That's really good. In case you didn't know, that's really good in a set with actually zero fucking like targeting removal. I guess there's Book of Eclipse, so we're going to talk about everything else in a bit. Uh, but Mind Master is another psychic type monster, which has the effect of you can pay 800 life points and attribute one psychic type monster, except Mind Master, to special summon one level four or lower psychic type monster from your deck in face up attack position. So we can basically go through any psychic like if you had only psychic monsters in the deck we could summon literally everything 
And that would be interesting. But that's not gonna happen. That's that's not something we're gonna be doing, okay? Uh my master is a level one tuner, so it can easily go into a level five with level uh level fours, for example, or into a level six with level fives, and level eights with level fives and twos and so on and so forth. It's a pretty good card, I'd say, and it also grants us access to more tuners or more non-tuner monsters. And I think this will be a key card in making this deck work, actually. And then we have Mind Protector. Mind Protector is a 2.2k wall. And this card's controller must pay 500 life points during each of their standby phases if they cannot destroy this card. Monsters with 2,000 attack or less cannot declare an attack except for psychic type monsters. This thing is actually really good, like just as a wall, like along with Janus and Dark Resonator, we have a couple of good walls in here. But the problem is, it's a level 3 non... Uh, non-tuner psychic so odds are we're always just gonna synchro it into literally anything else but yeah now we have a psychic commander which is a level three earth type psychic tuner when those four hands attack it's kind of a beat stick because because it, it has the effect of when a psychic type monster control when a psychic type monster you control battles during the damage step you can pay life points multi impulse of 100 up to a 500 max to have the monster it is battling lose that much attack and defense until the end phase so you can basically attack with multiple psychic type monsters to steadily whittle down a bigger uh, monster and then kill it. And I think that's cool. Uh, then we have Quibble Hedgehog, which is a really, really honestly overtuned card for this era of Yu Gi Oh! If this card is in graveyard, you can special on this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You must control a tuner monster to activate and resolve this effect. It's like, you can technically abuse this so much, but not for this era. In XYZ, there's a couple of, like, when we hit Zeal, Cards like Quillbolt and Plague Spirit Zombie, a card that's going to appear in the next set, is going to be pretty good. I would say. It's going to be pretty good. I don't think we're going to be seeing Quillbolt, though, unless we somehow incorporate like rules in, rules in relation to that. But, uh, then we have Raiko. Raiko is something that we saw in last set, I think. And Raiko is a monster of a removal card. You want to play this card in basically anything that you can most of the time, especially in the Synchro era where cards start wanting to go into the graveyard to enter their effects. We don't really have that many cards in here that want to get milled, but the ones that we do, when they do get milled, that's usually an actual just flat out plus one. Uh, but does it target? Listen here, you little fuck. We're not going to talk about this right now, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the Tricky. Now the Tricky is the trickiest part of the deck, I would say. You have to figure out specific timings for when you want to use the trickiest effect to set up your graveyard or set up your hand or set up your field or do literally anything with it because the fact that it can be easily used to set up Quill Bolt in the graveyard and summoning a tuner from your hand and then getting a level 8 out on the field. And considering that your level 8s are honestly str the strongest cards beyond like Goyo Guardian, that's really important. You should really always aim to do a combo using the Tricky and Quill Bolt because you can't really set up Quill Bolt beyond using it for the Tricky. But yeah. we also, I also should point out the Tricky, if we played with the original printings of these cards, would be even stronger than it is now. And we're going to talk about that when we get to the extra deck. But yeah, the Tricky has the effect of uh, you can special summon this card from your hand by discarding one card. That's it. It's pretty good. And then we have Turbo Booster. Turbo Booster has the effect of if you have a normal summon a monster this turn, you can special summon this card from your hand. So let's say you normal summon a Dark Resonator, or let's say you normal summon a Kerbons, and then you have a Quill Bolt in the graveyard, you can special summon the Quill Bolt, and you can then special summon Turbo Booster and get three monsters out, and then Synchro Summon into a Magical Android. It's a pretty good combo play, I would say. And then we have, and then it also has another effect, which is you contribute this card to destroy one face of monster, uh, one monster opponent controls the battle one of your monsters this turn. Then we have Book of Eclipse, which has the effect of change all face up monsters on the field to face down defense position during the end phase of this turn. Change as many face up face down monsters defense position monsters your opponent controls to face up defense position. Then your opponent draws e cards equal to the number of monsters changed to face up by this effect. So it's. it's kind of good i would say it it uh is a really good disruption tool to prevent your opponent from just winning the game on the spot but there is a problem and that problem is specifically if you don't win the game on the next turn they probably drew like three or four cards and they're probably refilled their entire hand and considering that at this point it's probably not that impactful 
in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! that could be life or death. And then you have one of the new cards for the set for Light Swarms. It's a uh, Charge of the Light Brigade. Now this card alongside Raikou have like existed in Yu-Gi-Oh! for a specific period of time in practically every single deck that could play them because of the fact that they set up Graveyard so well or so much better than alt alternatives. So Charge of the Light Brigade has the effect of send three fa th the top three cards of your deck to the Graveyard. Add one level four or lower Light Swarm monster from your deck to your hand. It's e-call, but it has an additional cost, which is actually beneficial for you, arguably. You could say that, oh, milling is bad for you, but no, legitimately, milling is good for you now. You should always consider incorporating self-milling if you have an option for it. Uh, then e-tally, which is the best fucking card in this set. This thing is any psychic monster in your deck on the field in instant speed, and that's good. Like, no joke, that's good. This card was limited to one for like 10 years. I thought, I'm not actually sure right now, but I'm pretty sure it was limited to one for uh, at least 10 years. Could be a little bit less than that. Let me double check. Uh, 2021, emergency teleport, it's at three. Emergency teleport, it's at three. Ooh, it's not quite 10 years anymore. I guess I'm stupid. No, that's emergency call. Oh, there it is. No, it wasn't uh, one for 10 years, but it kept like going uh, between one, two, and three. And then it, it, it's it's fun. I would say that's fun. Oh, it was uh, two up until last year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then to actually explain what it does, you special summon one level three or lower psychic type monster from your hand or your deck and banish it during the end phase. But you'll always use it for uh, synchro play, so it's never actually banished. So you use it for something like, uh, ooh, psychic commander, and you suddenly have extra copies of psychic commander, which is important for this set specifically. And then we have fighting spirit. Fighting spirit has the effect of the equipped monster gains attack, 300 attack for each monster your opponent controls. It if it will be destroyed by a battle, you can destroy this card instead. That's a good card. Uh, defense draw during your opponent's turn at the damage, cal at damage calculation make the battle damage you take from this battle zero and if you do draw one card graceful revival is a called the haunted but for level twos and lowers we don't need to explain further mind over the matter is a uh, well solemn I guess you could say yeah, it's solemn has the effect of uh, when a monster would be normal or special summon or a spell or trap card is activated to read one side get that monster and negate the summoner activation if you do destroy that card really good Legitimately, really good card. Uh, then we have a second copy of King Cup Gear in the side deck, and we have three copies of Spell Striker from Champion Pack Seven. Which this card can be really good for um, for 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 synchro plays because it's level level three, of course. Level three with a level two equals five, so easy enough. Uh, another copy of Book of Eclipse. <clears throat> Uh, draw called Dealings, a card that we've seen before. Each player draws one card and sets uh, discards one card. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And desynchro, desynchro allows you to basically pop one synchro into its uh, components, which is interesting for removal. Because if your opponent doesn't have all their materials in the, in the graveyard, they just fizzles basically. The they can't special summon. Their synchro summon gets removed, but their special summon gets fizzled. Uh, then we have Psy Impulse, which could be an interesting cheese for like game one, but I didn't really consider putting it for like actual game one. I was thinking maybe put it for game two and use that to cheese in there, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, Mind over matter, a third copy, and then threatening war from Champion Pack Seven again. Uh, also, Dark World Dealings was also from Champion Pack Seven. That's why it's in here. And threatening war has the effect of your opponent cannot declare attack on this turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, avenging. Wait, um, yeah. Uh, then we have the Psy Extra deck, which is finally relevant after the longest time. Uh, avenging Knight Parshot is a level eight. Uh, fairy synchro monster with 2600 attack and 2100 defense it has the requirements one tuner and one non-tuner light monster so we only have one like target for it i guess we have raiko but we can't really use that you know <laughs> yeah uh, but no we have my protector too yeah that could work that could totally work yeah uh but it has the effect that once per turn you can target one face of monster opponent controls and change that target's battle position if that card attacks if, if this card attacks a defense position monster inflict piercing damage to your opponent that's a pretty pretty good pretty good card. It's just far shot again. Doesn't none care. Then we have the monstrosity that is Goyo Guardian. So Goyo Guardian is alongside I think Dark Strife Fighter the first two synchro. Actually, I think Baranak Baranak was there too. Not not entirely sure, but one of the first few synchros that got banned because of the simple fact that this card used to be beyond oppressive. It was a level six with one point two thousand attack. 
and generic requirements. Now, I would argue that the same thing that happened with uh, Summoned Skull and Blue Eyes and Dark Magician happened here, where Summoned Skull had the same stat line as a, as a Dark Magician, that being Stardust Dragon in this, and Blue Eyes White Dragon was also just significantly slower and didn't do as much as uh, Summoned Skull early on in the game. I would say Goya Guardian has the same thing going for it in competition with Red Dragon Archfiend and Stardust Dragon, where it has the effect of uh, when this card destroys a monster, uh, an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can special summon that monster to your field in defense position. This effect, basically, when you swung into an opponent's tuner, swung it into your favor instantly. There's zero chance of your opponent really recovering from there. But at the end of the day, they banned it and they decided that well, we're not gonna we're not gonna bother with uh, actually unbanning it for like ten years. And then eventually they started implementing a policy on changing card text like heavily to actually change the function of the card. So a Grail Garden used to just be one tuner and one non-tuner, but nowadays it requires one earth tuner and one non-tuner. It's not as good today, like in general, but arguably the card hasn't really changed in function. You could still play it, but it's just too slow. It's too weak. It doesn't do enough. So it's not really relevant in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! But yeah, uh, this thing is probably going to win the game. A hundred percent. Other Magical Android. Magical Android is a level 5 generic synchro monster with 2.5 thousand attack. And the effect itself doesn't really matter, but it just gives you life points based off of your psychic type monsters. Nitro Warrior. This is basically here as a kind of a cheese using Goya Guardian. And it's a level 7 warrior synchro monster with 2.8 thousand attack. And the effect of or requirements of one Nitro Synchron and one or more non-tuner monsters. Once per turn, during uh, once during each of your turns, if you activate a spell card, this card gains attack, 1,000 attack during the next attack this turn involving this card. During damage calculation only, if this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, after damage calculation, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls and change that target's attack position, and then this card can make a second attack in a row on that monster. Not very good. Honestly, a uh, shit card. Then we have Red Dragon Archfiend. One tuner, one non-tuner monster. Level 8, 3000 attack, Dragon Synchro. After damage calculation, if this card attacked an opponent's monster in a uh, defense position monster, uh, destroy all defense position monsters your opponent controls. Okay. Once per turn during your end phase, destroy all other monsters you control that did not declare an attack this turn. This card must be face up on the field to activate and res to resolve this effect. This card is big, by the way. It's pretty fucking big. It's pretty beefy. It's pretty strong. It's kind of scary. If it gets out on the field, you might as well like give up, I would say. But that's ignoring the fact that you have Fighting Spirit and Goyo Guardian in the game, but still. Uh, then we have Stardust Dragon. Stardust Dragon is Yusei's ace monster. It has the requirements one tuner, one non tuner, uh, Dragon Synchro, 2.5 thousand, level 8, Wind Dragon. Yeah. Uh, when a card or effect is active that will destroy a card on the field, or cards on the field, uh, quick effect, you contribute this card and negate the activation. And if you do, destroy it. During the end phase, and if this effect was activated this turn and was not a negated, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. That's a pretty cool, like, cool effect. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, then we have Thought Ruler Archfiend, which is a 2.7 thousand Psychic Synchro uh, Dark Monster with the requirements of one tuner, one non tuner, and it's a level 8. Uh, if this card destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, again, it's a, again, life points equal to that monster's original attack in the graveyard. When a spell trap card is active, a spell or trap card is activated that targets one psychic type monster and no other cards. Quick effect. You can pay 1,000 life points and negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. That about does it. I, I think this is going to be a really, really interesting point in the game. I think we're going to have a very good time in like general with these sets. They're going to be far more interesting. They're going to have far more back and forth, I'd say. And I'm really excited to see how this goes. So good luck with the games. All right, guys and gals, and welcome back. And uh, here's what we're going to be playing today. So as always, let's go through the deck and see what we are working with. So I'm starting off with uh, tuners here. So we are playing a three dark resonator and a single psychic commander. These are our level three tuners. So Dark Resonator, the first time it will be destroyed by battle each turn, it's not destroyed. Helps take it on the field and psychic commander has an effect which can boost the power of psychic type monster. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Mostly it's here. So we have an easily target for a level three if we need it. And most of the time, what we want to be uh, making with level threes is level six, a level eight synchro, sorry with the tricky 
or we can use it to make a we can use uh, psychic commander is uh Im oh yeah important to note psychic commander is our only earth tuner so we're going to use it to make goyo guardian so psychic commander and another level three which the other thing that we have in our deck for that is my protector we can use those two to make goyo guardian so yep uh, then we have uh, three level two tuners in crab bonds when it's targeted for an attack you can pay 800 life points to negate the attack uh, in a way better than dark resonator since you can use this multiple times but I'll, obviously you can't set it since you have to have it face up when it's targeted for an attack for the effect to resolve and this can be used to uh, basically make a level eight with multiple mind protector this can also this can also be used with something like psychic snail and quillbolt hedgehog together so the hedgehog is something that can most often be there to facilitate our levels quite well. We'll get to that after we cover all the tuners. Uh, two Mind Master in the Mind deck where you can pay 800 and Jupiter Psychic Time Monster, except Mind Master is probably a level before lower Psychic Time Monster from your deck in the face of attack. It's just here I say a level one tuner, we can use it with uh, uh, some of our side deck cards that we'll cover a little bit later. Level one is obviously just flexible because then we can use other monsters too make our synchros and also the effect is pretty neat because if we have extra psychics we can then uh, use them to filter out our other psychics and just play around with the levels that we need we also have a fifth uh, fifth <laughs> third copy of it in the side then probably our most important non-tuner monster in the entire deck uh, arguable with a couple others the tricky a level five that can be spell summoned by discarding a card so obviously for synchros we want to have access to our levels uh as well as uh, as easily as possible. And obviously having anything to be able to special summon is huge. So the trick is here for that. Uh, then we have Psychic Snail at three copies, a level four. We can pay 800 and select one other face-up monster, face-up psychic type, sorry, monster you control. And that monster can attack twice, but Psychic Snail cannot attack. The effect is kind of whatever. It's our biggest normal summon in the deck. Anyways, if we're going to be wanting to swing with our non-synchro stuff psychic like snail probably would be the one obviously if we have another one then that's another thing but that seems pretty unlikely so it's just here to be a level four psychic uh level three psychic uh, mind protector uh 2200 wall so pretty decent wall the effect uh the maintenance code doesn't matter because we're going to be setting it anyway and then if we have to keep it alive with 500 points life points sure uh, the unfield effect is just like uh, smaller monsters can't declare an attack another effect that doesn't really matter we just want it there to be a psychic that has a specific level tree quillbot hedgehog this is probably going to be our best way alongside the tricky to actually getting into synchros because if this is in if it's in your graveyard you can spell summon it but it banish it it's banished when it leaves the field and you have to have a tuner to resolve the effect so we can basically just if you have any of our tuners, let's say if we just uh, have a Mind Master, we can use uh, the Tricky to spell summon itself. We can use Quillabolt from our grave, and then boom, we have a level eight. In it. yeah, it's it's just a probably the best way alongside the Tricky to actually get into Synchros. Then we have three Raikos. So Raiko was not in the set, uh, but as we've established earlier. The legacy rule is in effect, so Light Sworn are allowed to be played. So we are including a tiny Light Sworn package. That's why also we have a single copy of Jane in the side deck. This is just here if I feel like I need a little more punching power. It's just a good normal summon that can then swing for a 2100. But Raikou, we already know, on flip it melts up 3 and pops a card in the field. And uh, I'll cover charge here since it makes the most sense. This is just mill 3 to add a level 4 level Light Sworn monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, this will obviously be our Raikou, unless we side into Jane. But it's just a mill 3 and get Raikou from the, right, from the deck. Sorry. Uh, as for the, our spells, uh, 3 e Uh This is another card that's there just to help us get into our Synchros. Since we can use this to get any of our Psychic types in our main deck, except for Psychic Snail. But most of the time we, are, we probably want to go for a tuner anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's a, a quick play, so we can use it on Jeex's turn, but we don't have any ways of uh, synchro summoning his turn, so probably this will just end up being something that we'll play on our turn. 
Uh, side station, add three copies, a continuous spell card. Uh, when a, a second time monster is normal summoned, you can pay 500 to increase its level by one, and it's attack by 300. And interestingly enough, this is not when you summon a second time monster. So not only can we use this as something to uh, play with our levels, because this is nice, because something like Psychic Snail and Crab Bounce doesn't really do anything for us. But if we have Psy Station on the field, let's say I open Psy Station and Crab Bounce and Psychic Snail. My turn one, I can uh, use size to activate size station. I can normal crab on pay the 500 for size station to make it a level three tuner. My next turn, I, I can obviously use crab on own effect to keep it alive from everything that isn't like targeted, actually card effect destruction. And then we can during our next turn, we can normal psychic snail, have it become a level five. And now for a thousand life points, boom, out of two, these two cards, we have ourselves a level eight. So I feel like the size station is very good for that. But also, like I said, it's not when you summon. So we can also use this on stuff like G stuff that Jeeks has. And I feel like when you look at the tuner lineup, like even oh, I would be surprised if he doesn't play at least stuff like Mind Protector. But like he's definitely gonna be playing Crabons. Like he's definitely gonna be playing Psychic Commander. Probably mind mess. Like he's going to be playing these tuners, so we can also also use Psy Station as something uh, like ways of disrupting him to play around with the levels and maybe screw up his synchro lines. So I think Psy Station is very interesting because of that. I think it's a pretty good card. Uh, as for the traps, we have three kunai with chain. I wanted some attack boosting here because we have we will basically. I feel like we will a lot of the time we're going into same synchros, so I feel like attack boosting is pretty important. Uh, to be able to just, in the case of a mirror, we both have Thought Ruler, we both have Stardust, we both have Red Dragon, Archfiend. Uh, I feel like it's going to be important to have access to boosting. And while the equip spell was pretty neat, I already forgot the name. Uh, I like the flexibility of Kunai with Chain, because like, if you can't get to our Synchro Monsters, Kunai is still pretty good. You can just basically use it to stop an attack, and then afterwards you give a 500 attack to something. Which, in the case of something like Snail, Chain now becomes a 2400 a beast stick. So if your opponent has something like Magical Android, they'll have to crash it into it. So I feel like Kunai is just the most flexible one, which is, although it's a trap, I still ended up wanting to play it over the others. Uh, Mind over matter at a single copy. When a monster would be a normal spell hold or a spell trap is activated, you can tribute a psychic that monster, negate summoner activation, and if you do, destroy the card. It's only at one copy because I feel like there's not much that we want to use. For. The only thing that we basically want to use this for is, okay, if Jeeks is actually going for to a, into a Synchro. And even like then, the problem is that it's a decently niche because like Stardust can protect uh, from it, a Dust Ruler can negate it. So if these are like on the field, then it doesn't do anything. So, I, and obviously you have to also have a Psychic type monster in the field that doesn't just get beaten over. So I felt like it was a little bit too niche to include more, but I still felt like it can be a pretty swinging card. So I wanted to include a copy of it. Uh, two telepathic power, kind of the same thing as Stardust and Thought Ruler, completely obviously uh, negate the card. But when a Psychic type monster controls your spark battle with an opponent's attack monster, you target your opponent's monster, pop it, and gain attack, equal to the monster it had on the field. Uh, this is basically here to facil facilitate. Uh, not only our life points, because we have a lot of stuff that needs to actually pay life points, Mind Master, Crabons, uh, even Psy Station. We have a lot of uh, stuff that needs life points as a cost. And additionally, like just being able to one for one, well, technically two for one since we are using it back for and losing our monster, is pretty valuable. And obviously, like if he swings something like Goyo into something and destroys our monster, like being able to pop something like Goyo with telepathic power is going to be obviously very good, because Goyo is massive and finally we have a single graceful revival uh something obviously we don't want to see early but a little bit later on being able to graceful revival something like a crab or yeah mostly crab bonds basically like we can reuse our tuners with that is going to be very neat it's just a call of the haunted for weenies as for the side deck though i'm uh, mostly a champion pack cards with the exception of the uh, the jane the third copy of mind master and the psychic overload which I don't know if how many psychics I will actually consistently get to the grave, so I don't feel confident in mending in this. But if I feel like the games go uh, pretty slowly, and uh, I'm actually co uh, consistently finding psychics in my graveyard, I then would like to side into this. Mm. 
So we have that. Oh yeah, and I think defense draw was also in the main main set. I I didn't know how valuable it was. Obviously, it's replacing itself and replaces uh, or gives me facilitates my life points a little bit. But since it's not something that protects our monsters, I don't know how valuable it would be. So that's why it's in the side as well. As for the monsters, though, we have three first layer dragon, the dual mode beast. This is here because it's a level seven that can be normal summon. So obviously we can't uh, special summon it, which is a bummer. But alone, we can just if we have mind master, if we Italians a mind master. Uh, that Mindmaster and Fusilier Dragon are already at level 8. So it's just a pretty easy way to get into any of our level 8s. So I feel like that's good for that. And then we have 3 Jujutsu Master. Uh, this is just a good defensive card where if Jig swings into it with a uh, Synchro, then he will lose the Synchro so he will get placed on to the top of the deck, which is obviously very good. And then uh, finally we have Threatening Roar. Which is probably going to be uh, my choice instead of defense draw if I end up uh, sending it the stuff from here. It's just your opponent can declare and attack this turn. And this actually protects us, our stuff from battle. Uh, we can then continue building materials. We can actually use it to protect something that we can then go into a synchro with next turn. And finally, our synchro. Since for the first time, I think, in a long time... Uh, Extra deck actually matters. So we're playing a most of these. I probably don't need three copies of. The only thing that I didn't include at all is Nitro Warrior because I just didn't feel like uh, Nitro Synchro was good enough to be played. Uh, a single copy of Avenging Knight Parsha. This is mostly just here if we see an opportunity to go for a game with it, since it does require uh, specifically non tuner light monsters, which means Raiko and Mind Protector. So it's very hard, really hard to get into unless we get something from Jeeks. Or obviously use chain, but basically it just deals a piercing. It can, uh, it can give itself a free piercing swing with the effect where you can target a face of monster your opponent controls to change its battle position. So this is basically if we see an avenue where we can go for a game with Parshath. Uh, three copies of Red Dragon Archfiend. The effect doesn't really matter if it attacks a defense potion monster, you pop all of your opponent's defense monsters and all of your stuff has to attack or it gets popped. Doesn't really matter, it's just basically here because it is the single biggest thing. Because, uh, well, uh, the card that we cover next I think is probably the best generic synchro here. And Archfiend is the one way of actually dealing with that. So Archfiend is 3000 and it deals with exactly Thought Ruler Archfiend. And that's also why I wanted to have Kunai with Chain, since it gives 500 attack, so Kunai with Chain attached to a Thought Ruler Archfiend is actually enough to swing over Red Dragon Archfiend. But Thought Ruler, uh, also generic level 8 when destroying a monster by battle, basically reverse Wingman effect, you gain life points equal to the original attack, and then additionally it can negate spells and traps that target psychic monsters, but it has to be targeting specifically one uh, it's like a monster. Uh, you can pay a thousand to life points to negate the activation. So pretty good stuff. Obviously protects from stuff like telepathic power, which is pretty damn good. Unfortunately, it's also a spell trap, so Raiko still will deals with it, but probably a good thing because otherwise I feel like that ruler would just be insane. Uh, Shadow Dragon, our last generic level eight. Uh, it simply can it contribute itself when a card or an effect is activated that would destroy any cards on the field. So Sardis is really good because specifically of Raiko. Because basically Raiko pops everything else in the set. So instead of being able to protect anything from being uh, popped by Raiko, obviously makes it very good. Uh, two copies of Goya Guardian. Uh, two because we're only running one Psychic Commander. I wanted to include the second copy if we managed to uh, yoink a Psychic Commander with our Goya from Jeeks, because obviously if we can go into double go, that would be insane. Uh, and it's an air tuner and then an tuner monster. It's a level 6 with 2800 attack. And when it destroys an opponent monster by battle and sends it to a graveyard, you spell summon that to your field in defense. Obviously taking something like tuners with this, very good. Like just taking away resource from your opponent and adding the your repertoire to be able to go into fury dosh synchros. It's just a recipe for success. And finally, sorry, uh, very lengthy uh, deck breakdown since a lot of new cards to talk about, is a Magical Android, a 2400 beats deck, basically. So it's a generic level 5. Uh, well, for the most part, it's just a 2400 beats deck. During each grand phase, you gain 600 for each time that much you control. Most of the time, it'll obviously just be Magical Android, so you just gain 600 at the end phase. Not nothing since we have so many life point costs here, but also not the greatest thing in the world. But yeah. 
I'm pretty excited for this. Like I said in the intro, I haven't really ever played much with Synchros, so this will be a very new experience for me. And definitely like when building this deck, I felt like uh, Synchro era is scary because I feel like deck building gets so much harder. Uh, now, so it'll be very interesting how these games build. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the uh, deck building section. And uh, sorry for the lengthy intros this time around. Hopefully it will be uh, more in line with the usual stuff next week when I don't have to explain everything about the new stuff. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy the episode regardless. So I will see you all in the dueling zone. Ladies and lads, welcome to another episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Learning Journey and uh, welcome to the Synchro Era. Still, still a crazy sentence to be saying, but I'm sure we'll get used to it uh, soon enough. So it's interesting because up until now we haven't really had to worry about the extra deck too much. But like, it's very rare for us to be actually summoning things about the extra deck. But <clears throat> excuse me, but now I feel like for the first time it'll actually be a reoccurring thing that almost every episode we have to actually worry about what our opponent has in the extra deck or what do you think jeeks i think this is gonna be the genesis of a new era duelist pick your rock <laughs> no you can't keep it away with this what the fuck anyways how does he do it every time Oh, what baby. Is All right. Uh, now the thing here is, what do we do Watch with out. these hands is the question. And combo? More check? Uh, well. 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 You know, you know. You, combo? You, you get what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Now combo. I think... If you're gonna T-set and pass, I fucking swear. I think this would be funny. Would it be funny? I think it would be actually kind of funny. All right. Um, does it make sense though? It doesn't make sense, but I kind of want to do it regardless. All right. Uh, all right. We're starting off with side station. But then the question is, what the fuck? Don't, 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 worry about it. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> the, the question is, do you want to cook something up with this side station or not? And I think the answer, you know, it's just, uh, you know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Is I will normal summon a Krebons. And I will pay 500 to give it the level and attack boost. And then I will pass. Why, well, you don't think Psy Station is the most powerful card ever printed? Dude, that thing is fucking nasty. And now my Krebons is 1500 attack points. Let me think of it. <laughs> So, now I'm going to point this out in case you didn't realize what it does. You can use it when I normal summon a psychic monster. Yes. I uh, yes. know. Because it's like whatever, just whoever. Uh, that's why I was thinking about it a little bit. Wait, is it for both player? But it's just like, okay, yeah, I get to decide when to do it. But yeah. Technically, that's really bad for me. I mean, because it, it, it depends. Because you always have to account for, am I going to screw your levels or not? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, well, well. If it isn't Saucy Jack. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have plays, I guess, but it's not like they're good plays at this it's point. It's not because... as powerful as summoning a level 3 Krabons with 1500 attack points. I'll look at something. Go for it. I feel like this, especially at the start, will definitely be like the games will go a little bit slower because we actually have to think. And uh, you know, uh, not all of us have a playtest in our decks. Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I would. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I almost just deleted my 15 year old uh, Yu Gi Oh Pro that totally, totally does not have a fully playtested version of this deck. 
I am totally not going to check my uh, 2015 Yu-Gi-Oh for what this deck actually contained, because I may or may not have forgotten the exact details of the cards that my Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know how But yeah, happen. so uh, Jeeks actually f finally decided to be very dedicated, actually went ahead and playtested his deck for this time. Yeah, I, I decided that maybe it was about time I played my deck to the fullest, you know? Can't relate. I'm just here and I, I've... I'm, I probably don't even know what all my cards do because I just Base. read them once. Where it's like, you know what? That's great. Let's put this thing in, and then I forgot about it. Kinda giga based. I won't lie. Uh, well, if if I'm gonna be boring, I might as well set three pass. Interesting. Well, I will. Start my turn. Uh, I'll draw some by main. Well, 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 well. Can you give me a second? I spilled my drink. Oh, yeah, go for it. Uh, Hmm. This is interesting. And if that happens, then it, I guess it doesn't really matter. Right. Actually. It's actually kind of interesting. Is it good? That's another thing. I don't think it's good enough. I'm actually quite happy that... <laughs> okay, I'm not happy that <laughs> Jeek spilled his drink. I just guess I'm actually quite happy that Jeek spilled his drink, so I have time to think, but it's like, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, I'm back now. All right. Uh, I think what we're going to do. Too back for obvious is scary. It could be anything, but you know. We got to go for it. It is the start of the synchro era. So I think what we will do is we will uh, normal summon. Psychic snail. Anything on the summon? Okay. Mm, nope. Because I would like to pay another 500 to yep. increase the dragon level by one. And then I would like to synchro summon using my Krebons to tune my Psychic Snail for an eight. Yep. And I do think Red Dragon Archfiend is my pick since it's the biggest thing. Anything on that summon? Yep. Not on the summon. I'm looking for All right. A uh, battle phase. Swing into the set. Raikou. Red Dragon. Red Dragon Archfiend's effect activates after damage calculation in the damage step. Before the effects of flip, flip effect monsters or the effects of cards like DD Warrior activate. If a Red Dragon Archfiend attacks a face down flip effect monster and destroys the flip effect monster with its effect, the flip effect monster's flip effect activates after it is destroyed. Yeah. Ta da. Yeah, I mean, it was going to be Raikou, but that, yeah. you know, that's the thing. I gotta go for it, man. I, I gotta go for it. We, we can finally get 
and gaming uh, synchro on the field so i gotta go for it obviously um oh. then Watch mm, that doesn't matter i'll just pass okay oh my fucking god witness me i will activate the trickies effect to discard yep. quill bolt hedgehog to the grave to special oh. summon the tricky then i will normal one, summon two, psychic commander three, and yeah. then i will activate quillbolt hedgehog's effect to special summon quillbolt hedgehog from the graveyard yes then i will use emergency teleport to search my deck for a level three or lower psychic type monster and i will search for uh where the fuck is it uh, i mean i guess crabons works kind of but I will go for Psychic Commander number two, baby. Yep. And then I will Synchro Summon using Quillbolt Hedgehog and the Psychic Commander that was just summoned to Special Summon Magical Android. Yes, sir. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, also, I did not ask this, but did you want to maybe use Psy Station on the one that I normal saw? Uh, no, I did because I figured like you still have... You have a five and you have a uh, eight, but yeah, I didn't. That I would have. Uh, otherwise, started shouting, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. now with hindsight, Sorry. like I don't know why I didn't go for Sharda since I was basically sure that it was right. Yeah, but it's whatever. that's actually kind of what I was thinking of doing. If you said something where mm -hmm. I was gonna go for Sardas and I was intending to play around Araiko. Yeah. Uh, then I will activate. Mm, Let's see. Let's think. Let's think. Can I even get anything else? I mean, that doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. Uh, Quillbolt. Oh, I should have summoned Quillbolt using it. Oh, my God. And then used it again later. Oh, shit. I'm so bad at this game, man. Uh, well, I'm going to activate nothing. I'm going to go battle face. I'm going to attack using Psychic Commander. Yep. The tricky. The magical 14, android. 2024. And then I'm assuming yeah. you're going for Stardust? Uh, we're going to go or for the Archfiend. I don't think there's anything in this that you could use that could actually kill things. Let's think. Is there anything like that in this? I mean, you can use that, but that doesn't get negated by this because it's only for spell and traps effects. Are there any spells and traps in this set that can destroy cards? There's Mind Over Matter, but Mind Over Matter doesn't target. I guess there's Tayo, Book of Tayo, but Book of Tayo doesn't target either. So you can't even use it on that. So I think... Actually, that's a very good question. Because uh -huh. anything in this that could get run over, either like that could do something can also be just dealt with using the same methods regardless of which one i go for because you don't have any single target destruction uh -huh. in this you only have red dragon archfiend and red dragon archfiend is an aoe thing and you can just attack a non uh if you just attack a card that's in attack position its effect doesn't activate uh -huh. so it doesn't even get negated so i should totally go for thought rule archfiend here mm, yep Based off the fact that I'm pretty sure you shouldn't have anything that, like, deals with this shit. And then I gain 1,200 life points. Yep. And I... I take the turn. Draw a stand by main. Then... Um, we will start with a... I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. I will start with a normal summon of a mind mm -hmm. projector. Oh. We will continue by firing off e -tally. Anything on that? Yep. Nope. All right. Then with e -tally, we will grab ourselves a... Oh, yeah, you can go into Goyo using this. Yeah, 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 good point. Psychic Commander. And then I will tune my Mind Protector with my Psychic Commander. And I will go into that thing exactly. Goyo Guardian. Yeah, and then you will attack into my thing. Anything, and lose... anything on the summon? Nope. Yep, then I will swing into Archfiend. 
for 100. Lose 100, and then I give it to you, and you put it into defense. Yes. Actually, do I? You have to you... put it into defense. Oh, yeah, it's always. Yep. And uh, this one didn't have. Yep. I mean, I have one activation of that thing, but yeah, uh, that'll be all. I'll pass. Gaming. Are we gaming? I will activate. Yeah, two back row. Fighting spirit. Oh shit! Yep. Yep. So it... No, it's and three thousand. I... I will attack the Goyo Guardian. Yep. Goyo to the grave. Actually, doesn't matter. Is it better to actually use my thought ruler? Because like I'm losing hmm? Goyo, then this will crash. I don't know what's your back row. I actually. Oh, you wanna? Oh, fire! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the uh, thought ruler activation. I think I actually have to do this, so I will. In fact, pay a thousand to negate the fighting spirit. Okay. Then Since I will it attack. Because ta equips target, right? Yeah, equips target. Yeah. You have to play them to target something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in instead of uh, attacking the Goya Guardian, then I will just attack into the Thought yeah. Lord Archer. I should have done this the other way around, but I completely forgot about Thought Lord Archer having that effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, for some reason, I was like, oh, yeah, I can just negate it, right? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, that was the thing, because I figured, like, since you're going to kill it anyway, I was just like, might as well get to use out of it anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I will pass. And you will gain 600. Yes. Now, the thing is, I assume that if you had something to deal with, battle stuff you would have already done it so since you didn't do it yet I I'm obliged to assume that you don't have anything so I think we will just go right away to battle phase and we will swing into android yep I will activate in response a defense draw so I take no battle damage from this but yep. you still yeah, it's still yeah. get the android. Uh, just move it to you, yeah. This, this is so cool. Yeah. I draw Thank one card. You. Yep, you get the draw. And then we go uh, main two. We set this. But yeah, it, I've, I didn't even think about it. Like, it obviously makes sense that it summons. Uh, Goyo summons in defense. Because obviously, uh, if you destroy something you got and then you could still uh, swing with it, it would be pretty gross. Imagine Goya Guardian against Super Heavy Samurai. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> would be very balanced, I would say. <sighs> now I have a choice to be made, actually. Hey, yo. <sighs> Android is so small, it can get swung over. But honestly, I think I'm so low on life points, I actually want the life but I will go end phase I will gain 600 and pass it back to you okay because I mean Android will get swung nice. over by basically anything but Gonna normal summon. Yep. I mean, at least yep. you you have a lot of life points in the gate stuff. Yeah, I'm normal summoning. Then I will set one card. I don't think I have enough life to be paying for Krabon, so yeah. Thinking. Mm-hmm. Given that you've sat on it for so long, I'm assuming the back row here is the one, and you talked about Quill Bolt, I'm assuming it's whatever the, like, basically Tudor Call of the Haunted was that was in the set. 
Yes. Graceful, reliable. A I wild hunch. <laughs> I'm thinking, is there anything that could do? There's no extenders in this, which is kind of weird when you think about it. Mm hmm. Next turn, I normal summon something, go in the Bishalkin. I will activate Graceful Revival. Yep. To special summon, Mind Master. Uh, level two or lower. Oh, yeah, Mind Master. Yeah, never mind. I thought it's like Commander. No. And now, I, you, no, link, now you link summon into Nightmare Cerberus and pop my Goya Guardian. Yeah, I will summon Crebons. No. Uh, I will summon Crebons, and then I will sacrifice Crebons to summon Crebons. Yeah, so now you've paid Actually, what? Uh, uh, be before that, I, I will also summon Mind Protector. Okay, so Mind that's Protector. 24, that's 32. Yeah. Paid thirty two life points, thirty two thousand life points. Yeah, I am actually entirely fine with this. Uh huh. Uh, it's purely because of the fact that I honestly can't do anything else other than fi uh, like filter my deck, and then I will actually thinking, thinking, thinking. Yeah, I'll just pass. There's something else I can do. Yep. The thing is, do I want your mind master? Is the question now here because there's stuff that has piercing, which is scary. I do think we will start, however, with a charge of the light brigade. Yep. So we will mill three. Uh, yep, and then we will add to our hand a Reco. No, <laughs> that cannot be. Uh, oh yeah, and we're obviously main one. Huh. We will swap this Android to attack. And then the question is, what else do we want to do? So my most just one summon with revival. Yeah. I can't go into Goyo. I can't, I mean, Crabbons build obviously just pay the eight hundred. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will go battle face. Yep. We will swing Goyo over the Mindmaster. Yep. For twenty seven, and then we will, uh, well, make you basically pay the eight hundred toll. Yep. Then we'll go main two. We will. This is so weird. Oh, it's champ. Oh yeah, and graceful is gone. Not like it would matter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's... kaboom. This is such a weird play. What did Archfiend say? 
It just def okay it pops all the finish stuff. Big is the make Goyo. Do you have a way to get to that though? Is the question. Okay, this this is gonna be very strange. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. I will simply set a monster. Could be anything. Could be anything. And uh, we will pass, and I will gain twelve hundred for magical androids effects, and we will pass. Now I have no idea what your other back row could be though. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually over. Mm. Goyo Guardian um, is one hell of a card. <laughs> yeah, there's a good reason why this card has been shit on for the entirety of five days after this. Yeah. That, that card, the first synchro with Dark Select Fighter that got banned because of the fact that it just generated way too much advantage. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. But hey, we had a pretty decent game one, so let's go set for game two. Weird changes, but you yeah, will see how this pans out. Copium, it'll be fine. <laughs> Surely. Surely it will be fine, right? Oh, I mean, this is not too bad. I got not agree lie. with that statement. Uh, this is actually. This hat is good. dog shit. It's dog water, if you know. Yeah. I mean, is it really dog water or are you just, you know, it hyperbolic? Is. You know? It is very bad. Okay, I see, I see how it is. Yeah. Okay. okay, buddy. But I can draw uh, a card and make it less bad. No. That's how it works, that, I, I've heard. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Yeah. I would like to honestly just pass the turn, I won't lie. Like, legitimately, I just kind of want to pass the turn. <laughs> but I can't. I mean, you can. It is something that you're legally allowed to do. Yeah, but I have to establish tempo, otherwise I'm wasting my turn. Because there's a few plays that I can do here that end up in a board. A like, few plays? A, a few plays, like about... Agree. Three, maybe more. But but like I'm I'm sitting here thinking, is it actually worth it going for that? Like I could I could totally go for something else too. I could like normal summon this guy and just be done with it. I also did realize when citing that my side deck was bad. Hell yeah, I'm just gonna normal summon crab on <laughs> All right, base. You fun. have got to be fucking kidding me! All right. Oh, Boston? What's that? No, I think like if you if you ask an AI to generate the worst possible hand of six cards in this deck, I'm pretty sure this is the hand they would give you. Oh what God. the fuck am I looking at here, actually? Amazing. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, well. It's okay. Neither of us are doing very, very good right now. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah. Well, I still have those same plays that I was talking about, but now I'm gonna body check this first. It's not destroyed by Battle of the for yeah! the first time each turn. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's so what it's all about. Uh, I would like to. Two, 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 two. And if I do this, I can, I can pop that right now. And it'll be done and over with. You know? It'll be gone. It'll be good. Fucked up even. Yeah, sure. Why not? I'll normal summon turbo booster and sack turbo booster to kill Tarkers. <laughs> Sure. 
Yeah, baby. Then <laughs> they'll set one card and pass. All right. Um, all right. What we will do? Yeah. Yeah. Is we will fire off, Psy Station. Oh, Psy Station again. Yeah. Then. Pass. We will normal summon my own crabons. Oh my god, it's your homeboy! And Quite I will honest. pay 500 life points to give him a level as well as 300 points of attack. Um, Anything wrong with that? Yeah, I'm thinking before you even activate that effect, like, mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna have to uh, allow that, yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, a battle phase? I'm gonna pay 800. I'm sorry to say. Yep. I pay 500 to make you pay 800, baby. No. That's what I'm talking about. That's, and then I'm going to pass. This is that life point economy or something like that. Yeah. I'll go standby main. I will discard from my hand threatening roar to special summon uh, the tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. And then I would like to activate from my hand emergency teleport to special summon from my deck. Is this okay? Uh, yep, that is fine. Okay, I would like to special summon from psychic my deck commander. a psychic commander. Hmm? Hmm? Is, is, is a psychic commander? Hmm? Unless, mayhaps it is in a psychic command. Hmm? Maybe, maybe. Uh, 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 um, uh, I mean, I only have level eights and level fives. What the fuck? And levels a uh, level six, I guess. But you know, I can't summon a shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess my only real play is, in fact, psychic crew. Yep. And then I will activate Psychic Commander's effect. Uh, wait. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's during the damage step. Both of them. I, I can do it twice. <laughs> Damn, that's kind of based. That I'm going nice. to activate Fighting Spirit on my Crebons. I'm going to go into battle phase. I'm going to attack uh, When you go into battle phase, I'll threatening roar. Threatening roar. No. How can this be? <laughs> okay. uh, I will uh, sacrifice from my side of the field uh, monsters. I will yeah. sacrifice a uh, four, 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 four. What is this thing called again? A uh, sink row summon. Yes. Hmm. You know, it would be really funny if I went into Red Dragon Archfiend right now and I popped my entire field because it didn't get to attack. Yeah, it would be funny. That would be funny. I mean, it doesn't pop itself, so you know, you'll still have yeah, that. You'll just yeah. get rid of your own crab on, so. I am just my own little crab on guy. He's, he's just a little funny guy. He's just a fella, just a little, you know? Just a little fella. He's a little fella. Everybody loves this guy. Uh, he is a little fella. He's not a big fella like my crab on. I mean, I'm gonna send the graveyard both of these fucks and special summon. Uh, thought ruler archfiend. Yep. Pass. Uh, makes sense. I am going to commit something. Let's go. We'll set a back row and uh, we'll pass. So cool. Wow. I swear uh, my draws are actually AI generated to be the worst possible. I'm gonna, gonna go into battle phase. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna attack the Grimoire. 
I am going to pay 800. No. Uh, I'll go my first two set card. Please. For the love of everything that is holy. What this the is fuck? This game plan. You, you, bro, you should see my hand. <laughs> is that a back run? I'll pass. <laughs> this, like, bro. This is a sick fucking uh, joke, actually. Like, my... My hand is a sick fucking joke. Pioneered it's... by the government. I'm gonna attack the... Yeah, I'll take your 800 foul wench. Yeah. Uh, gonna pass this. Yeah. Did it just pass or is it an actual play? I guess we can do something else. Uh, I will say a monster and then I'll pass. I sure wonder what yeah, that monster you know, will be. It could be anything, actually. That is quite unfortunate that you would have that monster in this position. Which monster? It's a little sad because I can't do anything about it. I don't know what you're saying. You're saying that monster, asking you know which monster it is. I think I have an idea of what monster it could possibly be. Yes, yes, I have an <clears throat> inkling, if you will. I will go battle face. I yep. will attack into the crab. <laughs> You're a real bastard, you know that? <laughs> what do you mean? Take your 800. Yeah. Now, as I was saying, there's a real big problem with this situation. And it is the fact that I will have to attack into this. What's the problem I, about it? Like, if I attack into the right go, the problem is... Yeah? I lose my Thought Ruler Archfiend, but you don't gain card, one card. No. What makes you think that? Because it's Thought Ruler Archfiend into right go. It's a good trade, right, for you? Yeah. Well, that would be the case. If it were, Raiko. What do you mean? What? <laughs> what the fuck, man? I've been complaining about my hand the whole fucking game. <laughs> you only got tutors, man. What the fuck, man? I am going to end resonator. my life. I am actually going to end my life live on video <laughs> footage. Dark Resonator is the strongest wall in this fucking set, by the way. Because <laughs> you have to attack it twice. I'm going to break something. Oh. How the fuck is this possible, actually? This is... Uh... I hate video games. Same, buddy. Same. Is it time for Spell Striker? Normal summon Spell Striker? Hmm? <laughs> oh, this game is ass. It's amazing. I, I, I'm, I'm very much enjoying the second game. Like, I'm really actually, God handicrafted rabbits. the worst possible draws you can have in a Yu Gi Oh match and gave them to me. Like, I've legit had like seven dead draws in, in it. You know what? Fuck this. This little fella's going in attack. Fuck your life points. Whoa. I'm taking some of your life points. What do you mean? I'm crashing everything into this and surrendering. I do I do not want to play this game. <laughs> I, like, I cannot... I genuinely cannot have a worse hand if oh, I no. try to draw the worst cards in my deck. What a shit fun. fucking match. Oh, my God. Anyways, uh, game three. What a... What a great experience that was. No. Show, show me seven fucking tuners again. 
Hallelujah. Seven. Only seven. Only seven. Uh, uh Chairs of the oh. Light Brigade. Oh, I, I've, I've seen this plane before. Mel 3. Mel 3. And yeah. get a Raikou to my hand. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Oh, well, you could have actually, like, hovered the charge and it automatically there mills you a 3. Oh, Damn. Yeah. Um, what else? <laughs> we'll set, we'll set, and we'll <laughs> set, and we'll pass. I wonder what that It could... is a dark resonator. It could possibly be. I will activate a charge of life again. Ooh, I'm out of culture, I will I see. add to my hand a Raiko. A Raiko, and then I will go through. You have to mill a three first, actually, I judge. Uh, I would like Wait, to. Really? Oh, actually, yeah, that's that's actually important. Dark World Dealings! Yeah, that's an actually important thing. I'll normal summon this and put it on top of the deck and shuffle the deck. And... Oh, yeah, I... you didn't like your mill, so you instead no, did no, it no, again. No, no, All no. right, I see. Yeah, how. yeah, it's yeah. It's, yeah, basic, yeah. It's, basic, it's, basic, yeah. it's basically the same end result. Oh, I think, no, actually, it, 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 there's one different card that's kind of funny. I'll, I'll use another one. Oh, I wonder what you're getting with that one. Uh, I, I wonder what I'm gonna get with that one. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm assuming you I'll, got Raiko. I, I think I got Raiko, yeah. I, I didn't feel see it, so. like I've got a Raiko in So you mind. have two Raiko in hand. I'm gonna activate the trick game to special yep. summon it. And... Then I would like to normal summon a psychic commander. Yep. And I would like to make a stardust dragon. Oh. And then I would like to go into battle phase. Yep. And then I would like to attack the Raikou. Is it actually dark resident? It's actually, it's dark actually not, but it's also That's... not Raikou. It is a quill oh. hedgehog, oh, baby. No. I got scammed. I got super fucking. Oh my god, the biggest scammed. Then it's your turn. Uh, thank you. E Taylor time, baby. Uh, draw some my main. Huh. That's usually kind of interesting. Hmm. Does it do enough, though? Is the question at hand? It's actually like a bummer. Man, mm. this feels super bad, but I think I kind of have to do it. I'll pass. Oh, oh. that's not what I was expecting. I've been, bro, I'm getting uh, super shafted this episode. Uh, I'm so sad. I mean, you won the first one using, like, superior Okay, I mean, games. I, got, I got one good card, and that one good card alone won me the game. Yeah. 2.5k. Yep. yep. Nothing Set I can do one. about it. Pass. You have got to be fucking kidding me, man. Is it only getting worse? You wanna you wanna do a rerun of this? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> uh I'll normal snail. Bye. Yep. Uh then I'll go. Hmm. Yeah, I'll go battle face. I'll poke in this thing. 
It's all right. Go. Yep. And I would like no 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 no. Mm. I would like to pop your back off. Oh yeah, this thing doesn't die. Oh, let me get yep. him back on the. Fi Whoa! Oh, your mill. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Yep. Mm. This one. Do I wanna? Hmm. I guess it doesn't do anything. Yep. And Raiko dies. Oh. We go. Yep. Main two. I just kind of assumed you would not have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't one more Raiko. Uh, I would like to activate mm -hmm. emergency teleport. E yep. To special summon the one card that I don't have any more copies of my in my deck anymore, by the way. Yep. Been yep. there. <laughs> Been there, done that. It's not, not anything new. I guess. Um, I mean, that's two. That's two. Um, I guess I'll just summon you. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. And I'll activate Quillbolt to special summon Quillbolt in attack. Yep. And then normal summon Raiko. Yep. And make and banish the cobalt and make a magical android. Yes, sir. And I would like to attack the thing. Going to battle attack the thing. Uh, which one? Hmm. Yeah. Nothing I can do about that. I'm taking 500 snail to the grave. And then I attack with. with. Yep, Starburst. So I know yeah. the card in your hand is a Raiko. Do you? I do. Because you, assuming you actually got Raiko with the second charge of the Light Brigade. Yeah. Wait, what did. did you discard a Raiko for? Because you normal that. Oh no, uh, you know, I was just no. normal. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know what the card is. I oh, eat well. it into Mind Master, Special Summon Quillable, Normal mm. Raiko into Android. Well, yep, uh, it's over. Nothing I can do. That's such a fucking bummer, man. Uh, what if? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just. My draws were just so fucking ass. GX is off to a rocking good start, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that's a problem, because, like, I don't know. Because deck building now becomes hard, so I don't know. I mean, se okay, second game, I just got super shafted, but then, I don't yep. know, like, if my ratios were bad for this one, but at least we got to see, uh, like, Synchros hit the field in all games. But, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> these other two games were just, like, so ass. Did you I have mean, any copies of the tricky in your deck? Yeah, I had uh, three. I just never draw them. Oh my god. That's All three so games unlucky. I had. So like, wait, I mean, yeah, I can just melt. Also, one thing that I definitely... Because I figured since basically the one thing that I would ha like to have a uh, commander for was Goyo. So I was only playing one copy of it, which was what I also said about like side taking. Like I should have had more of that in my side. Yeah. But yeah, just never finding the tricky like... Uh, Second game, I only drew tuners. Third game, I drew zero tuners. The last game, the very last turn, I drew Mindmaster, but it didn't do anything anymore. And just never seeing Eid's Heli. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you got super shafted by purely the fact that you didn't draw a single tricky Eid's Heli combo, for example. Yeah. Because, like, the combo of being able to discard quill bolt you go in like that's the combo that made me go like i want to actually play test this a few times to see mm. how it works which was the tricky into discarding quill bolt into e tele into anything in the deck yeah and if you could get something out of that consistently and the answer is yes it's not 100 percent of the time but it's consistent enough where you actually can like build a deck around it yeah but and like definitely uh, like, dark, at least one Dark Resonator should have been, probably even, like, two of them should have been Commanders. I should have been playing a second copy of Graceful Revival, and then, I don't know. 
But yeah, it's just like I mean, it's like I mean, you tell me basically like uh, tell a dad was an archetype that dominated for quite a while. So but like Italy is obviously a very sacky card. But so like obviously like you actually getting them like me not getting them that's basically like that's how you get to most of your synchro plays. And then once your opponent has like synchros the synchros make it interesting though, because it's like Stardus is the smallest of the eight pool, but it deals with all the destruction effects like Archfiend RPG is a good like middle ground because it can actually stop back row and it gets you value uh, if it sticks on the field and uh, uh, Red Dragon, so, sorry, uh, Thought Ruler Archfiend and the Red Dragon Archfiend is just like the effect isn't really relevant but it's just big in I, I played a single copy of Parch so what were your synchros by the way? Uh, I had sorry didn't get to mute. Uh, I had one par shot, two Goyo, because I only had two commanders. I had three oh. Android. I had two Archfiends. I had three Stardust and three Thought Rulers. Because I figured these are actually, there's one more card, and I'm going to show it after. Yeah, I was going to say, like, anyways. it's literally the same as mine, although I, I was playing three Red Dragon Archfiend. I had one copy of Nitro. Yeah, Warrior I was playing. I was thinking of... of it, but I figured, like, Nitro Synchro was. I didn't yeah. deem it worth enough to play. So the reason why I put Nitro Warrior in was because uh, I played in chat. <laughs> Assuming you played, yeah, Nitro Synchron, and you could, I could go and get using Goyo Guardian, yeah. and then make my own Nitro Warrior, and that would be super cool. But yeah. alas, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking of that because it was like, I was like, okay, uh, I don't, I'm never gonna need a probably like three of any of these, like for Dragon Ice Sheets, even like, but. I just figured, like, just in case if it gets to, like, a really, somehow, like, a really back and forth Goyo War, I don't even know how that would work. And I was like, Nitro Synchron is so ass, there is no way yep. we're going to see Nitro Warriors. That's why I ended up not playing it. But it looks like a lot of our things were very similar. I didn't play Dark Red Dealings. Uh, I also had three defense draw, but I had those in my side. I wasn't playing boosters. So the reason why I was playing D D was specifically I completely overlooked. That would have obviously been a really good one because can spell summon yeah. it. But yeah, I, just... I, I think spell striker with psychic commander is a really good like because that's Goyo. That's already Goyo. Yeah. Like with an E Tele, if you use E Tele, you automatically get spell striker out on the field. So that's a Goyo Guardian in the package. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, I mean and basically everything uh, revolved. It's like basically like everything just revolved all plays like revolved around E Tele. Yeah. I mean, that's because it's such a good card in this. Yeah, it is. But at the same time, I think it's not exactly just Italy. The tricky as well was something that, like with Quillable and with everything else in this set, made it good. Like if we had more level 6s and our level 7s, the tricky was like the card to play. Yeah, Tricky is a really cool card, and also it was just like a really cool card to add into this. It's like, at least I'm glad that you got to show it like multiple times. That was great. And like yep. overall, even like even though like the uh, other two games arguably weren't very good quality wise, I still feel like uh, we got to showcase the synchro line, like most of the synchro lineup, pretty well. Like okay, magical android is actually the life gain, but since there are so many like ways of actually using life points, is pretty good. Like Stardust, a Thought Ruler, and Red Dragon Archfiend have the like interesting uh, dynamic that they have like going on with each other, and then just like how broken Goyo is because it just like single-handedly won me game one yeah, even though think... we weren't play weren't playing the og version of Goyo so like to those who don't know like originally Goyo was gen a generic level six but then obviously insanely broken so they changed it to actually needing an earth tuner and uh, a one-off psych commander was enough to get it done imagine a world where the tricky into mind master wins you the game on turn two yeah that's basically. what goyo guardian being generic does yeah and that's just not that's not fun <laughs> yeah it it is it is not li but overall like i still feel like this is a a decent showing we got to showcase different synchro monsters which is what like hopefully this will be like going uh forward in the future because obviously the like these days like the extra deck is an insanely integral part of your deck and oftentimes the thing that actually costs you the most when it comes to 
building a deck. And this like synchros definitely were like immediately like synchros made it like, oh shit, we're actually now gonna be using the extra deck. Or then it was initially the fusion deck and then turned into the extra deck, but yeah. Yeah, it, it was changing the extra deck after uh, they introduced synchros. Yeah. I remember when I read about like I got a magazine that was purely in English. It was the first like piece of English media that I specifically asked my mom to buy me, mm -hmm. and it was about Yu-Gi-Oh! and it had a new guy on the cover. It wasn't Jaden, it wasn't Yugi. Uh, yeah. It was Yusei. Yeah. And in that like magazine, they ca they gave you like an amulet. That's why I actually wanted because they gave you like a Millennium amulet thing. Mm -hmm. But they talked about synchros, and I was so confused because I didn't understand it at all. Uh, I yeah. was like. 10 or 11 and yeah. i just saw a white card that i had never seen before yeah and it was some super cool dragon like, surprisingly yeah it was a uh, cover card of jewelers genesis you know stardust dragon baby yeah and that i've, I've always been fascinated in playing synchros because of that and i think mm -hmm. in that same magazine they announced like they're going to be changing the extra uh, the fusion deck into the extra deck and they're going to put a limit on it mm -hmm. you can't have an infinite amount of cards in there anymore Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I completely forgot about that thing that also, like, the 15-card yeah. limitation was also put into account. Yeah, because the fusion deck was unlimited. Yeah, I, yeah I, I completely forgot about that. Which is bring that up. fucking insane. Yeah, it's it's like, funny to think about. Like, the, there, there were combos that existed using magical scientists yeah. using the fact that that was unlimited. And that was just stupid. Yeah, it's the limitations are uh, basically like need to be there. It's kind of like the same thing like for ba most things. Like if you think about like well, why is there a like cap and like you can only have sixty cards in your uh, deck, but like imagine a world with grass where you have uh, like you have grass and you have like a two hundred card deck. Even like it could be like so much more than that. Like t today. You having access to like even mediocre graveyard effects, but there are now 140 cards in your graveyard that you can use. It's like what? So it's imagine, it's kind of necessary. Imagine how unlikely you're to draw a card that lets you search for grass. You know, yeah, but it, but that would make it like even crazier. But it's still like the chance of it happening is still, you know, it is still there. But yeah, uh, otherwise probably I could have done at least another game, but I am absolutely starving because I got here from class and I unfortunately didn't have time to eat before. So I'm going to need to go eat something. So but hopefully, hopefully next week we will have a little less one-sided games. At least like the f first game was like a swingy and like the Thought Ruler Really clutched it out into getting into Goyo after, but yeah. I'm, I mean, I would say that that was more misplay on my part. So I mean, yeah, there is also the argument to be made. Like I get Stardust, and because it's like okay, it's most likely gonna be Raikou your set. Like there's a pretty, uh, almost a zero chance that it's something else because you're not a psycho who sets some other garbage like I do. Like uh, Dark Resonator, like Dark in Resonator and Quill Bolt Hedgehog. Uh, to be fair, putting uh, Dark Resonator in attack against Archfiend is an actual line of play because there aren't many cards in this set that are bigger than Dark Resonator. Yeah, it's honestly good. Yeah, but yeah, it's, like uh, like regardless of everything, like we got to see like most of the synchro lineup actually using like. Par Parshad is a very niche scenario. It's basically like, okay, this is the one way you can actually deal with Archfiend because it's just so big. And also, if you had just have, if you happen to have Kunai with Chain, then you can actually even swing with, swing over. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Red Dragon Archfiend even in attack mode. Yeah. So it's and still... then there's also Fighting Spirit. Fighting Spirit is, I think, yeah. the more impactful one because it's not like. This it's something a, you can use on your turn. Yeah, it's not a trap. I was like, initially, I think... I think initially I was playing two Fighting Spirit and two Kunai with Chain. But then, like, in the end, I ended up cutting, like, the... Uh, I put in one more Kunai with Chain and one more... Uh, and took out both of the Avenging Spirits. And I can't remember what was the thing that I 
Är det den on top? Was it a third charge of the light brigade? Because I think at some point at least I was playing two. It might have been that. I'm not sure, not completely sure. But I was also like tinkering and thinking about playing that card. But in the end, I end up going with uh, Kunai instead, which unfortunately didn't come up. But still, yeah, regardless. I, I was... Yeah, I was kind of surprised by the fact that you ended up playing Kunai at all. Like, you felt like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> I, the, most of the thing was basically like, okay, stuff like Thought Ruler can obviously deal with it, but like stuff like uh, Stardust swinging into things like Archfiend swinging, basically anything that wasn't Archfiend, I felt like was in a situation where we both actually have Synchros on the field. I feel like the E500 boost that it immediately gave you actually swung a lot of like, unfavorable like synchro matchups into your favor so that's why i uh, deemed it like worthy enough to be played but mm. yeah unfortunately both of the scenarios where i had access to it you had thought ruler so it didn't do anything yeah but yeah regardless though hopefully you enjoyed that absolute wash but that's just how you guys sometimes i like was it like still i think we got uh to showcase the synchro lineup pl pretty well and it's uh i gotta give credit where credit is due to uh konami where i actually think like for the first like uh first set with synchros like the synchro lineup is neat like there are a lot of actually good cards and okay like probably you're never gonna go through uh all all three of your synchros but if you just think of this as okay like you're gonna play three of each like even playing five different synchros you're still like make a little bit of uh this is like okay do i want to have nitro warrior do i want to have parshat in there so it's actually a like really cool uh lineup of synchros and then also the aspect that we covered about like them having different matchups with each other yeah they're basically a rock paper scissors yeah which is pretty cool but yeah well, that being said, though, hopefully you enjoyed the episode, and uh, we will see you next time for <sighs> Crossroads, Crossroads of, of Chaos. Chaos. Yes, Crossroads of Chaos. Yep. So we'll do that, and then uh, sometimes after that, probably very soon after, we will do uh, another structure deck episode, although a little bit different this time. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, y'all, and we'll see you next week, hopefully. So have a good one and peace.